Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 162. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cashflow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right. How are you guys doing today? Well, I'm wondering, you know, when, depending on when you're listening to this, it, it it's going to <laughs> be relative to your level of frustration. Now, before we start talking about what you're probably frustrated about, uh, I just want to remind everybody, uh, make sure that you're leaving a review on iTunes, leave a review on iTunes, and you'll be entered to win a cash flow game. And we let you know on Monday who that is. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. So if you've left a review, you're automatically entered for next week. So don't even stress. Uh, if you haven't, no time like the present other than to go out there and just go ahead and make that happen. So keep that in mind as you are out there doing your thing, making things happen. Hey, leave us a review if you've liked any of the previous episodes. What we're going to talk about today is something that I think a number of people are frustrated about. More importantly, we're going to talk about the process of change and what you can do about it because there is something you can do when it comes to facing the fact that you may have paid more in taxes than you'd like. That's right. For those of you not in the United States, we just had our tax day. And I'm guessing there's a number of people who are listening going, well, I really dislike April 15th. I don't look forward to that day. And now you're frustrated. Well, let, let's just talk about this. You knew the date was coming. It's not something that's, you know, <laughs> uh, hidden. We all know when that date is. And what's interesting about frustration at times is that just because we're frustrated doesn't mean we're ready to change. Sometimes I, I learned a long time ago that there are times when I'm, when I'm frustrated. I actually just want to be frustrated because I'm not doing anything about it. And occasionally we get to that next stage through this process of change where we just want to vent. We just, it's on your vent list. That's what I kind of call it. It's like we have these things that are on our vent list and we want to blame and point fingers and just complain and complain. And there is no time like right now where you can find nothing but misery and company all around the subject of taxes. Now, again, I'm not up or down on taxes. I'm not a CPA. I'm not any of those types of things. I want everybody to pay their fair share. But here's the thing. Did you know that there's a rule book? I mean, that that's one of the things that I find that's interesting. There's a rule book. And if you read the rules, it is very, very clear on what you can do to reduce your taxable income. Now, I can understand things being on your vent list, and to some degree, yeah, it feels good to let off that steam. But the question becomes, when is it going to get on your change list, and you're going to be ready to, quote unquote, do something about it? Not just think about it, but actually do something about it. Take a measurable action step. Yes, maybe you wrote a check this time. Maybe you're getting a refund this time. And maybe, who knows, whatever is happening for you. The question is, if you don't like the process, or if there's something that you might dare say that the government is not spending the money that you just contributed on in a, in a way that you like, one of the best things you can do is what my friend Tom Wilwright has said. If you want to change your tax, you have to change your facts. You got to do something. Give the government a reason to not tax you. And one of the things that I wanted to discuss today, and again, this is probably going to be a, a very short but straight to the point type of episode because, you know, you're already frustrated. I'm just going to tell you something very clear that you can do to change those facts. 
so that the next time, you know, 365 days from now, you are faced with this decision, it can be completely different. Because in general, there are four things, four things that you can do uh, in most governmental tax jurisdictions, four things. So if I go through a broad categories, I can go through four things in which most governments say, if you do these four things, guess what? You can get your tax money back. In fact, there's a fifth thing that some of you are aware of, but we'll talk about as well, which gives you access to the other person's tax money. So, and, and not only can you get yours and keep yours, but what if you could get the tax money for those who aren't doing something or aren't doing the things that you're going to learn here on this particular episode? And I'm just going to share them with you as ideas that I, I give to you to go out there and to explore because you, and, and execute. Because at the end of the day, we all have to contribute to, to society in various different ways. And this really comes down, though, to one basic concept. That one basic concept is, are you a consumer versus a producer? See, the, the, the tax code, most tax codes are there to incentivize and reward those who take on the responsibility to produce something versus those who just consume uh, you could call it a consumption tax to some degree. And that's literally what happens. If all you do is consume, you get heavily taxed. However, if you begin to produce, you get tax benefits. Now, before we start getting hate mail, just understand I firmly believe anyone listening could choose to be on either side of that fence. Uh, obviously, you know, when you go to the grocery store, we're getting taxed. Uh, for most of us, because we're not grocers. When we go to the the gas pump, we're probably getting taxed because we're not the ones, you know, we don't do anything as it relates to the gas uh, and, and provide that. But that's also where the clues are. So we're, we're going to talk about the, the four things. And, and it's very four simple, basic things that you and I use most days and we don't even really think about it. Here's the first one. Uh, the first one is it's simply... Instead of consuming food, become a producer of food. So what do you mean, Jay? Well, I don't necessarily mean, you know, like like be a Kellogg and start producing cereal. I'm talking about specifically a farmer, you know. One of the cool things about being an excellent farmer, just in my opinion, first of all, you got to work really hard. Uh, and it's hard, true character building, work, planting, sowing, reaping, waiting, patience. And whew, I, 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 if you are a farmer and you're listening to me, in fact, I know uh, some of you are because I've talked to you. You're, I remember strawberry farming uh, out there. And one of the things I like about it, farming, is that it's still related to real estate. <laughs> you know, you can't do that without some land and you need a lot of of it. Obviously, you need other things like water and and the, the conditions from a climate standpoint for you know, seeds. And I, I'm not even claiming to know everything that's required to become a food producer. But because you become a food producer, one of the things that you then are in quote unquote entitled to are things like tax incentives related to what it is that you are producing which oftentimes can result in you getting what would have been your tax money uh, as a payment, you now get that back. Just from becoming, instead of being a consumer, but becoming a producer. Now, obviously, learning to become a farmer is not necessarily anything I've seen in an ebook, but I guess there's somebody somewhere who's made at least one. Uh, become a farmer in 30 days or less. Who knows? It's probably out there. I don't have it. And I'm not saying that that's the avenue for you, but here's the thought process. Instead of just sitting around being frustrated, maybe this is one of the ways you can go out there to do what it is that you want to do in terms of lower your tax bracket. Maybe you know a farmer. Maybe uh, that needs some additional land or someone who wants to start a farm of any particular kind. Here's the point. Maybe they run the business, you own the land, together you guys partner. Everybody gets what they want in a very serious way. And now you become a part owner in producing food. Food that comes with, obviously, it's going to be lots of work, but what business isn't? The point is, we're talking about your frustration as it relates to taxes and how 
you might be able to do something about it. All right, so that's number one. What else could you do? You're like, Jay, uh, I'll just, I'm content. I'll just go to in and out get my double-double. And for those of you who have not known the pleasures of in and out or Krispy Kremes or even Chick-fil-A for that matter, I'm sorry. Uh, you can hopefully look it up online <laughs> and participate virtually with the rest of us. Now, you say, I don't want to be one of those that, that produce food. Okay, cool, fine. What else could I do? Well, what you could do is you could produce energy. Produce energy, like electricity is what I'm referring to, or oil, uh, or natural gas. All of these things that I'm, I'm stating to you require you to take on more responsibility, and that's one of the things that I think is often missed inside of the tax code, is that we don't realize that it, it actually rewards responsibility. The more responsibility you're willing to assume, the more incentives you, quote-unquote, qualify for to receive. So now that you're going to provide energy, instead of just consuming, you know, gasoline at the pump all the time. In fact, if you've ever complained about the price of gasoline being too high, the only reason you complained is because you weren't the one selling it, right? And that's the interesting take on it. If you become the one selling it, you suddenly want it to be high, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so low right now. I wish it was higher, because you need that revenue to support your business. And energy is something that we've gotten used to for quite some time. Uh, in fact, most of you would not be able to listen to my voice without consuming some form of energy right now. Obviously, electricity, right? Uh, for most of us, uh, could you imagine trying to live without electricity? Could you imagine trying to live without something as simple as oil? I know it sounds crazy. You're like, I don't use oil. Well, I think you use it more than you think you do. And that's one of the things that's interesting. You can always have a customer. But what about the real estate play? I'm sure many of you have already figured out that natural gas is a real estate play as well as oil is a real estate play. And, and those are the things. Well, how is electricity a real estate play? Let me give you an example. Uh, I happen to know a person who owns uh, some land in Hawaii. And I, I don't know if you've been to Hawaii ever. It's a state in the U.S. Beautiful place. Lots of wind. Lots of wind. One of the types of devices that can be used to create electricity is a wind mill. Well, a windmill has to stand on something. And if it happens to stand on something that is where wind is, like there is in Hawaii and you own the something that it's standing on, this piece of land, now you have a way to participate in the production of energy in a completely different way. You say, Jay, I know nothing about building those types of windmills or wind farms and making that happen. Good, you don't have to, because there are many, 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 many people who do know how to do those things. Your job is to make sure that they know your land is available for such an enterprise. And again, right, right now we've talked about food to produce, uh, you becoming a food producer. Now we're talking about you becoming an energy producer. What I want you to really see is either one of those produces a, a very sustainable stream of cash flow. In fact, it's kind of the fun kind of cash flow because it's, it's a defensive strategy, meaning if everything isn't going well, do people still need food and energy? The answer is yes. It's resilient to market fluctuations. And those are the things that you want to think about, especially that's one of the things I, I love about real estate in and of itself. It has so much utility value that it's hard to imagine a situation in which it has, it, it can't be used to trade or exchange for something. Well, now you're the one producing energy, whether that be electricity, whether that be oil, whether that be natural gas, uh, you know, you if you happen to own a stream or something of that nature that's capable of that hydroelectric energy, that would be cool too. Uh, all I'm trying to say is energy has value and it still takes real estate to make that happen. And it still has the ability to produce cash flow. So instead of just being a consumer of energy, become a producer of energy. And guess what? 
Do you think the oil guys make any money? Of course. But do they also receive any sort of tax benefits? Again, what we're talking about is, Jay, what could I do? What is possible? What is out there for me if I actually wanted to get my tax money back? Because I, gosh darn it, don't want to write another check like I just wrote. (laughs) No problem. Well, you've got the food and then you've got the energy. Let's talk about the next thing, something that entrepreneurs are pretty darn good at actually doing uh, in general, uh, another way to get your tax dollars back. Well, it's simple. All you got to do is have an idea. But it's got to be an idea that's so big, you can't do it yourself. That's it. It just needs to be an idea that's bigger than your own capabilities because once your idea is larger than your capacity to execute all on your own, you know what you need? You need help. That help comes at a price and now has a job. And that's one of the interesting things to think about. Yet they're helping you to bring your idea to fruition and you create a job. You take on the responsibility of providing income for another family household. And therefore, you are rewarded for that responsibility for many different things. Now, I'm not saying that hiring people is the most fun, or, and nor am I saying is it easy, nor am I saying is it for everyone. Just like providing food or energy may not be for you as well. That's not the point. The question is, is could you provide a job? What about that next fix and flip? You know what you do? You tend to hire lots of contractors. That's a form of providing jobs. Same thing when you're buying and holding. Somebody's got to manage that property. Hopefully it's not you. And if it's not you, that's an even better job because it's very sustainable. Or those maintenance men who are also helping you to execute the vision and making sure the property stays in decent enough condition. Guess what? That's also another job. That's what I'm trying to say, is that there are jobs that you and I create every time we go out there to either reposition a property or make sure it goes into faithful service. There's a lot of work to be done, lots of jobs to be created. In fact, it's one of the reasons I love apartment buildings is because they create lots of jobs in the area, especially during the rehab phase, and then lots more sustainable jobs depending on the size when it comes to the management crew right? Your management crew, whether they live on site or not, that those are all jobs or the property manager and their size of their office is partially supported by the great ideas that you come up with on how you're going to serve people with clean, safe, affordable housing that matters most. And and those are the things that I get excited about, is that you and I can create a job. We create a job nearly every time we go out there to provide more real estate at uh, for sale, which is kind of cool. Uh, And entrepreneurs, though, it doesn't have to just be real estate. You just come up with any idea. I mean, you can come up with a new way of making a pen. And and if you get enough of the the right buyers, customers, investors, I mean, look at Kickstarter. You want to talk about creating jobs. Every idea gets up there. Now, not every idea is, is viable in every marketplace, but that's okay. The point is, is that jobs get created. Every time you're watching Shark Tank, Guess what? Jobs are being created. Houses are are being people, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters are finally being able to be put to work, to be put to productive use, to, to do the things that we can do well and become a contributing member of society. And all of that is organized under the entrepreneur who had an idea. And that was it. They had an idea, and they were brave enough to go out there and do something with it and do something about it. That's what gets exciting when you create a job. And when you do so, you get rewarded for doing so. Obviously, the more jobs you create, the more responsibility you're taking on. Now, this is not to say that every employer is 100% great. All I'm trying to submit for your acceptance is something you can do. Instead of feeling like, man, this tax thing, it just gets worse and worse. And there's, I, I, it's out of my control. There's nothing I, I have the ability to do about it. I just got to pay it. That's just not true. There are many things you can do. You just have to choose to do them. You can say, well, I don't want to do it. Okay, then that's fine. Now you're making a choice. At least now you will be educated enough to know that, well, at least 
I, I don't want to do these things, Jay, but I, I will make the choice, uh, therefore, to be the consumer and pay the higher tax. That's fine. And it's okay if you make the choice because you know it's not okay if you feel beat up and unable to do anything about it. So I'm, I'm giving you just some ideas of what you might be able to do. Interestingly, you, you may wonder um, if any of this matters in any way, shape, or form, and, and like who on out there does this? I have met people who do all of these things, even the energy one. You're like, what? How is that possible? I, I met a gentleman uh, a few years ago, in fact, who develops and like his entire his real estate plate is what he likes to do is he likes to develop power plants. Now, I, I don't know what kind of construction <laughs> budget that looks like, but it, it's still real estate. You know, I, I've never built a power plant. I, I find it very, very interesting. Nonetheless, it's still real estate and, and individuals are out there. Somebody had to build that power plant next to your house, <laughs> right? That electricity comes from somewhere and somebody had to have that idea. Why not you? You know, I think that's interesting. Well, you, you probably guessed what the fourth thing is by now, because we've talked about food. We've talked about providing energy as well as jobs. But a very common one, and the one that I think is the most accessible to anyone anywhere in the world, almost at any time, provided you have the legal right to own it, is obviously providing housing. See, the interesting thing about housing is that you can house businesses, you can house, uh, you know, tradespeople. You, you, everybody needs a place to remember this: live, work, play, or lay. Live work, play, or lay. You and I, we, we live in a piece of real estate, or we want a roof over our head, as they like to say. That is something that has been the case for quite some time. I don't expect that that's going to change anytime soon. That's called you have a customer in, in a lot of ways. We work. Wherever you work typically is a, a has a roof. You know, even if you do outdoor work, there's part of your work that's indoors, or at least your tools are kept indoors or under a roof in some way, shape, or form. So, because I know occasionally, maybe at a self storage facility or an industrial complex, a tradesperson might keep their tools there, but they work out in the field, which is great, but they still have a roof over something they care about, i.e., in this case, their tools that enable them to go out there and earn an income. So, you would. You live in real estate, we work in real estate, and occasionally you can play on real estate as well. Uh, have you ever noticed that a theme park, I don't know, Bush Gardens, Disney World, Disneyland, <laughs> for those of you who might remember Opryland, uh, all of these types of places are located on pieces of real estate. Well, somebody owns it. Have you ever thought about that? See, I, I have this disease. Everywhere I go, I think about and see real estate transactions. I wish sometimes I didn't. I know my wife wishes I didn't. I just see them. They're everywhere, you know? You, you can't help but see it because they exist. Every time you go to a movie theater, that's another form of play real estate. Every time you go to a hotel, that's play real estate. When you go to those restaurants, while yes, it's someone else's work, it's also your play occasionally, is it not? So, you know, concerts, amphitheaters, all of these things, shopping malls to some of you is a place to play and that's exactly what it is. But let's also think about other things like a play ground or a sports stadium, if you will. These are all real estate plays that are places to play. Now, you say to yourself, Jay, I'm not ready for the sports stadium. Okay, that's fine. Remember, people still live in single-family houses too, which is great. And then I said lay, L-A-Y, lay. Well, you probably have figured out at this point that all of us are not going to live forever, which typically means we need a final resting place where we are going to lay forever, <laughs> or at least this body will. And what's interesting about that is that that too requires a piece of real estate. Now, somebody just said, no, -uh, I'm being cremated. Okay, fine. But guess what? You still had to go to a mortuary first, which is somebody's piece of real estate where that business was housed. So you're not escaping either. Here's my point. 
one of the things that hasn't been talked about, and I'm just going to share this with you. I've shared it with a lot of people in some of the live sessions that I've done uh, across the globe. And I'm going to share it with you. So now it'll, I'll share it with tens of thousands of my closest friends, uh, i.e. you. <laughs> Have you realized that the baby boomers are, are, are very important to many economies across the globe? Like when they needed, you know, baby food, Gerber literally became a company that was now on the map. When they were all reaching... Um, at school age, suddenly construction companies were making schools because they needed them. When it came time for them to learn to drive, well, the car industry went through a great phase. And when it came time for them to, to get married, guess what? They went through a great phase in housing. And when it, you know, they were forming houses. And, and when it came time for them to begin to contribute to the uh, stock market or retirement plans, well, guess what? The stock market benefited quite, quite well. Uh, And as did every other market that they've ever touched, it has benefited quite well. Well, I started this by saying you need a place to lay when it comes to real estate. An interesting play that you might want to think about is the fact that if you were looking for a business to purchase, now this is going to sound weird, but if you're looking for a business to purchase, you want to purchase it before it becomes quote unquote hot or the in thing Well, I think that places like cemeteries and mortuaries are going to become the in thing, so to speak, because that land is going to become more valuable because there's going to be more people seeking it at the same time for a long period of time. I I truly believe that in the not-too-distant future, You're going to see, we will see on the TV late one night. In fact, you might be listening to this during that time, and that would be hilarious in my opinion. You're going to see the late night infomercial that says something to the effect of, for 1995, you too can own a a mortuary, and we'll show you how. Uh, (laughs) And once it becomes popular. I could see that. I, I I know it sounds morbid to some, uh, but others of you, you're resonating with this idea because you're like, yeah, that because if you notice, senior housing is something that's becoming more and more and more in demand again, all across the globe. So just think about that. Providing housing. So those are the four things you could provide food. You got energy, you got jobs, you got housing. Well, just because you do one, that doesn't preclude you. That doesn't mean you can't do the others too. So what if you provide jobs and housing? What if you provide energy and food? What if you provide food and jobs or energy, jobs and housing? Well, guess what? It just means you get more and more of that tax money back at the end of the day. Well, well, that's all well and good for you. Well, what about that fifth one that I said, how do I get access to other people's tax money, Jay? Well, good. I, I'm glad that you're saying that now because that means you've learned how to take care of your tax problem. Most importantly, you are ready to take on providing even more food, energy, jobs, and housing. Well, that, what do you think a grant comes from? The government money that you always hear about, there's lots and lots of unclaimed government programs and government money for this, that, and the other. Well, That's tax revenue that was collected from a consumer. He or she who becomes the producer, the one who owns and controls the means of producing a good or service, suddenly, once they fill out some forms, and it's a lot of them, you can be awarded other people's tax money in the form of a grant so that you can go out there and continue to do what you've done already. Uh, There are many grants and many such sources uh, for food, energy, jobs, housing, etc. And you and I, there's nothing preventing you from filling out the document. You say, Jay, but that's a big document. Yeah, I know, but you're, you're providing more of what the marketplace needs, which I think can be fun as well. So now... Instead of just being frustrated, you have something that you can do. 
Instead of just sitting around and complaining to, to your friends, waiting for another 365 days to go by, you have some steps you can take to begin to change your facts and do something about it. So that this time next year, it doesn't feel as painful or it's not, or at least it's a little bit more fun. And that's one of the things that you would be able to do is to change your facts in a very reasonably short period of time so that next time, April 15th comes around. Should you and I meet or should you be so fortunate as to still be around by then, then you will not dread it. It won't be as bad because you will have something to defend yourself with that you could put on a piece of paper and say, hey, don't tax me like the rest because I decided to cross that line and become a producer and not just a consumer. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.